Hello gin lovers and welcome back to No Nonsense Gin Reviews with me, Bobby Freeman. Now then, cast your eyes upon this delectable looking beauty on my left hand side. For this, my friends, is none other than Malfi Gin Rosa. Okay, now before we talk anything about this gin, can we just take a moment just to appreciate the prettiness? I think that is the prettiest and most beautiful bottle of gin I have ever seen. I mean, you, you, you just want to buy a bunch of flowers and take it home to meet your mother, don't you? Now, the reason I've picked this one today is I've reviewed a few Malfis in the past. I've done, well, two actually, in fact. I did the uh, one that's up there, that if you can see it, the Malfi Con Limon, the lemon gin. Very, very good, extremely impressed. And I've also reviewed the Malfi, it's, it's some weird name, but it's basically Malfi Blood Orange. And I tell you what, go back and watch my review about it because it was a good review, but it kind of, it grew on me even more after the review. I wish I could sort of, like, maybe I'll revisit it again because it really, really just got under your skin, that gin. It was, for a while, it was the only thing, especially in the summer, it was the only gin I wanted to drink. It was gorgeous, and it was this brilliant sort of luminescent pink as well. It was beautiful, really, really good. It stayed pink when you put the tonic in as well, so absolutely, I cannot recommend that more. If you can get a bottle of it, do, do uh, try it. It's very, very nice. So, I, it made sense. I haven't reviewed or tasted a Malfi gin for a while, so I thought I'd give this little fellow a go. However, there is a catch here. So the flavours in this are Rosa, as you probably get a few, a few of my more astute uh, viewers have probably guessed. That means it's rose flavoured, but it is also pink grapefruit. So we've got rose and pink grapefruit. And the reason I kind of uh, blanch a little bit at this is I'm not really a big fan of those two flavours. I've tried a few um, grapefruit gins in the past and I've never really... Uh, it's just a, grapefruit's quite a sort of a, a maybe an acquired taste. It's it's quite sort of unique and it's a little bit kind of bitter. And I've never really, some people love it, you know, but I've never really been a very big fan of it. And also, similarly, rose in drinks, I found it a little bit. I can't even think of the word. It's just a little bit kind of off for me. Uh, it's not what I call a pleasant taste. So, uh, in in theory. I suppose I'm not looking forward to this. However, because it is Malfi, I'm willing to just give it a go. I would, If it was any other gin, I probably wouldn't have tried it. But seeing as though Malfi have proved themselves to be so bloody brilliant in the past, I'm gonna give it a go. Now then, let's have a look at what they say on their website. Now I've said before about their website, it is like a Hollywood movie. It is beautiful, just as beautiful as, even more beautiful in fact, as, uh, than the bottle. So go and check it out, have a look. I'll read you a little bit of what, about what they say of this one. Uh, Italian juniper, Sicilian pink grapefruit, Italian rhubarb, oh, oh okay, there's rhubarb in it, it didn't say that. Italian pink grapefruit and rose, ah, interesting. Whoops, oh, we almost had a tonic on the floor then, never mind, never mind. Uh, and five other botanicals, which we don't know. Funny enough, it didn't mention the rose or the, um, or the oh, I did mention the grapefruit, yeah, of course it is, right, okay. Here we go. This bright, delicious gin. It's an, it's an Italian gin, this. So should I do it in an Italian accent, or is that racist? Hmm. I think you're treading a fine line there. I think I won't bother. I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll just do it in a normal accent. This bright, delicious gin is like no other. Our sun-ripened Sicilian pink grapefruits are grown in citrus groves on the Mediterranean coast, where the mountains greet the sea. Oh, that sounds lovely already, doesn't it? The taste is juicy, fresh grapefruit with a rich, long juniper finish. Enjoy this colourful burst of Italian sunshine on the rocks with tonic or in your favourite cocktail. Excellent stuff. No messing about. Straight into it. Right, let's have a sniff of the old fella, shall we? So, oh, hang on a minute. Oh, I forgot. Not only does Malfi have a cork, it also has a blue cork. Uh, the only gin I believe to have a blue cork. So let's give it a go on the old cork test, shall we? Here we go. Any squeak? No squeak. Zero squeak. Okay, never mind. Go for the full pull. Was a tough one. Oh dear, a bit disappointing on the pull. I thought that was going to be a bit more wholesome, but uh, never mind, never mind. It's just a bit of fun. Right, let's have a sniff of the old fellow, shall we? Oh my lord, oh it's strong. I've got some in the moustache as well. Good lord, that is a veritable punch up the nose of, of, of aroma, that. Oh, you get, okay, you're getting a lot in there. That packs a punch. Good lord, I have to wipe that on the old trousers, I think. Um. If I wanted a little sneak preview, I could just uh, lick the old moustache, but I'm not going to do it because that will be cheating. So, what I'm getting is a ton, an absolute ton of grapefruit, okay? There's no, no mistaking the grapefruit in there. That is there straight away. 
with yeah, and and and, and it's backed up. You, you can definitely it, it does, but it basically does what it says on the tin or the bottle in this case. It's rose, and then it can sort of is backed up with a slight sort of waft of um, or a whiff. I think I talked about this before. The difference between, between a whiff and a waft. I think a whiff is a slightly smaller version of a waft. I think you're getting a whiff of uh, rosiness in there, that sort of rose petal sort of aroma. So pretty much what we expected. But as you know, we don't spend too much time sniffing on this programme, so we'll get the old fella in the glass, shall we? Now, will it be a clean pour? Beautiful and clean. I, I actually like this bottle. It's got kind of a bit of a lip, which makes it kind of easy to uh, to pour. Let's put a tiny spot more in there, shall we? Whoa, whoa, whoa there. We don't want it too strong. Right, cork back in. Get it. Look, there's the blue cork I was talking about. Isn't that cool? Love it, love it, love it. Right, tonic in the glass. How on earth have I managed to dribble some on there? I don't know. Oh, I think it's when I pulled it out originally. Never mind, never mind. We'll deal with it later. What do we think? About right? I think so. Right then, here we go. Malfi, what's it called again? Gin Rosa. Cheers. It's a bit weak, that. I need to pull back a bit more in. That's an anticlimax for you. Ah, get in there, old soul. Whoa, -ho, that's going to be a bit better. Right, bang. Okay, take two. Malfi Gin Rosa. Cheers. Give it a swirl around first. Oh, now we're talking. Ooh, that is strong, but... Good Lord above. Oh, man. Oh, it's, it kind of just sort of flows over you. It's a very soft, very slow-moving flavours. But I tell you what, I didn't expect to like that, but that is nice. I mean, not even just like, okay, you know, not as bad as I expected. That's genuinely, genuinely really nice. Let me have another, another pull there. Hang on. Oh, my God. I said before... I don't, I'm not a fan of these grapefruity sort of flavours and that rose flavour I always find very sort of potent and sort of floral and heady and just a bit too strong. But, talk about balancing, they kind of offset each other, these two flavours, and, and, and actually move into the realms, move from the realm of offsetting into actually being genuinely pleasant. The grapefruit gives it a lovely, it, it's a lovely, it's a kind of a sweetness to the grapefruit. Maybe that's the rhubarb they put in there. Maybe that reacts with the grapefruit. I don't know. I'm not an expert in flavours. But that grapefruity flavour is is slightly sweet and it, it gets rid of that kind of slightly bitter, it's sort of tough edge you get to that grapefruitiness. And the rose seems kind of sweet as well. It's only, as I say, a little tiny whiff, just in the same um, measures as it was in the aroma. Um, it reflects that in the in the tasting as well. And somehow they've made these two flavours that I would never, never usually enjoy and would actually actively avoid. They've sort of worked their witchcraft and they've made them really nice. They just sort of swirl together and you can and you can pick them out really easily. It's not like you can go, oh, I'm not sure a bit of this. I can't really taste that. They're all there absolutely abundantly. And as it said, with the, but you, this is the key. There's still that essence of juniper in there, which a lot of these, as I've said before, a lot of these fruit gins or novelty gins, as I sometimes call them, they sometimes move too far away from the juniperiness and it just becomes something else, not gin anymore. But they've kept the essence. That juniper is, is sort of backing up all those flavours as well. So that is an absolutely... Hang on. Not only is it brilliant, it's extremely unique. I don't know any other gin that are putting those flavours together. And this is what I said. I said before that, that Malfi are a very underrated gin you know they're not super mainstream they're certainly out there uh, definitely in this country anyway i don't know about um uh, 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 other parts of the world where my subscribers are. i've got people all over the world so do let me know if this is there and uh, if it isn't do try and look out for it or if you're ever in the uk or in europe get some of that because i tell you what you will love it if you like gin this is a real, it's a very summery gin. We're just coming to the end of the summer here, but I tell you what, I'm going to be making the most of this stuff. And, and, and won't it look a, make a lovely addition on the shelf? Absolutely bloody brilliant in every way, shape and form. Now, price-wise, not bad at all. It's around that sort of middle bracket. It's £25, $30, which has been it's kind of a lot of the gins I've reviewed recently has been, have been around that sort of price bracket. And I don't mind paying that money just as long as it is good. And this, my friends, is very, very good. 
Now, as I said earlier, I do have subscribers from all over the world, all over the far-flung corners of the globe people are watching No Nonsense Gin Review, so thank you very much for that. Uh, do let me know if it's available in your area, it's always, always interesting to know. However, one of my subscribers, uh, Charlie Clark, has got in touch, and uh, Charlie is in America, and wanted to know uh, if I had any advice on how to get some of these lesser-known gins, the ones that aren't, you know, the, the, the mainstream ones, like your beef and your, your tankerays, for example. And um, I, to be honest, I didn't know, because I don't live in the US. However, I did promise Charlie that I would put it out to my subscribers uh, that are based in America and uh, to and if, to see if they've got any advice on how to find these more uh, obscure gins. So if you have any advice, please do help Charlie out and put a comment in the section below. Charlie will be very grateful. There you go, Charlie. You're welcome. So that's it for this video, my friends. All that left to do is to say to the wonderful, wonderful people at, people at Malfi, keep up the good work, my friends, because that is exceptional work. Uh, in fact, you know what? I don't often do this, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to down it, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Oh, no, that was slightly more than a mouthful of nice to swallow there, so that's very good. Oh, God, there's going to be a burp in a minute. My mum hates it when I do this. Oh, pardon me. Sorry, mum. Sorry about that. So if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and click, click the little notification thing so you get told when my new videos come out. And I will see you all next time on No Nonsense Gym Reviews, where I shall be Bobby Freeman. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.